In 480 BC, a small force of Greeks led by King Leonidas of Sparta faced off against the vast Persian army led by Xerxes I. Despite being vastly outnumbered, the Greeks held their ground for three days, buying time for the rest of Greece to prepare for war. The Battle of Thermopylae is remembered as an example of bravery and sacrifice in the face of overwhelming odds. In this video, we'll explore the events leading up to the battle, the battle itself and the aftermath. The Battle of Thermopylae is a prominent battle in the second Persian invasion of Greece. The first Persian invasion, which had been initiated by Darius I, had ended in 490 BC with an Athenian-led Greek victory at the Battle of Marathon. The defeat at Marathon marked the end of the first Persian invasion. Darius began preparations for a second invasion, which he would command instead of his generals. Before the preparations were complete, Darius died, leaving the task to his son, Xerxes I. The second Persian invasion of Greece began in the spring of 480 BC. Xerxes had amassed a massive army of between 70,000 and 300,000 men. They crossed the Hellespont and marched through Thrace and Macedon into Thessaly. In response, an Athenian politician and general named Themistocles, proposed that the allied Greeks block the advance of the Persian army at the narrow pass of Thermopylae. As the Persian army made its way into Thessaly, the Spartans, the de facto military leaders of the alliance, were celebrating the festival of Carnea. During this time, military activity was forbidden by Spartan law. The Spartans had arrived too late at the Battle of Marathon in 490 BC because of the Carnea. On this occasion, it was decided that the urgency of the situation was great enough to justify an advance expedition. The expedition, led by King Leonidas and his royal bodyguard of 300, was to try and gather as many other Greek soldiers along the way as possible while they awaited the rest of the Spartan army. The legend of Thermopylae, as told by Herodotus, tells us that the Spartans consulted the oracle at Delphi earlier in the year. They were told that either their city would be sacked, or in exchange they must mourn the loss of a king. Herodotus then tells us that Leonidas, in line with the prophecy, was convinced that he was going to certain death, since his forces were not large enough for victory, and so he only selected Spartans with living sons to continue their names. As the Spartan force of 300 marched towards Thermopylae, it was reinforced by contingents from various cities and numbered more than 7,000 by the time it arrived at the pass. Leonidas chose to camp at and defend the middle gate. This was the narrowest part of the pass at Thermopylae. According to Plutarch, when one of the soldiers complained, because of the arrows of the barbarians, it is impossible to see the sun, Leonidas replied, won't it be nice then, if we shall have shade in which to fight them? Xerxes commenced the first day of battle when he ordered around 5,000 archers to shoot a barrage of arrows. However, they turned out to be ineffective as the Greek shields were able to deflect them. After that, Xerxes launched a frontal assault in waves of 10,000 men. The Greeks fought in a standard Greek phalanx, in which the men formed a wall of overlapping shields and layered spear points protruding from the sides. Because they are fighting in such a narrow pass, the Greeks were able to use as few soldiers as possible. According to Herodotus, the units were rotated in and out of battle to help prevent fatigue. The Greeks killed so many Persians that Xerxes was said to have stood up three times from the seat he was watching from. Having taken the measure of the enemy, Xerxes then threw his best troops, the Persian immortals, at the Greeks. However, they fared no better than any of the previous waves. Reportedly, the Spartans used a tactic of feigning retreat and then turning and killing the enemy troops as they ran after them. On the second day, Xerxes again sent in his infantry to attack the Greeks holding the pass. According to Herodotus, he Suppose that the enemy being so few were now disabled by wounds and could no longer resist. However, the Persians had no more success on the second day than on the first. 
Xerxes, at last, stopped the assault and withdrew to his camp, where he was totally perplexed, according to one of his physicians. Later that day, as the Persian king was pondering his next move, he received news that would turn the tide of the battle. A Greek man named Ephialtes, motivated by the desire for a reward, informed Xerxes of a mountain path around Thermopylae and offered to guide the Persian army. Herodotus tells us that Xerxes sent his commander, Hidanes, that evening with what was left of the immortals and additional men. Reportedly, the force sent numbered around 20,000 men. At daybreak on the third day, the Phocians guarding the path above Thermopylae became aware of the outflanking Persian column. Herodotus says that they jumped up and were greatly amazed. Hidanes was perhaps just as amazed to see them hastily arming themselves as they were to see him and his forces arriving. He feared they were Spartans, but Ephialtes informed him that they were not. The Phocians retreated to a nearby hill to make their stand, assuming that the Persians were there to attack them. However, not wishing to be delayed, the Persians merely shot a volley of arrows at them before bypassing them to continue their encirclement of the main Greek force. Learning from a runner that the Phocians had not held the path, Leonidas called a council of war. Some of the Greeks ended up withdrawing, but Leonidas resolved to stay at the pass with the Spartans. When he had learned that they had been encircled, Leonidas offered the remaining allies a chance to leave if they wanted to. Many of the Greeks took him up on this offer and fled, however around 2,000 soldiers stayed to fight and die. Knowing that the end was near, the Greeks met the Persians in an open field head on. Many of the Greek contingents fled, and some were ordered to leave by Leonidas. A force of 700 Thespians and 400 Thebans refused to leave and fought on with the Spartans. The actions of Leonidas have been discussed thoroughly. Commonly, it is thought that the Spartans were obeying the laws of Sparta by not retreating. It has also been suggested that Leonidas, recalling the words of the oracle, was committed to sacrificing his life in order to save Sparta. Another common theory is that Leonidas and the Spartans chose to form a rearguard so that the other Greek forces could get away. If everyone had retreated, the Persian cavalry would have been able to run the Greeks down. At dawn, Xerxes sent a force of 10,000 men, comprising of light infantry and cavalry. They charged at the Greek formation, which sallied forth to meet them in an attempt to slaughter as many Persians as possible. Leonidas died in the assault, reportedly shot down by a Persian archer, and the two sides fought over his body, the Greeks managing to take possession. The Greeks withdrew and took a stand on a nearby hill. The Thebans moved away from their companions and surrendered. Of the remaining defenders, Herodotus says, they defended themselves to the last, those who still had swords using them, and the others resisting with their hands and teeth. The Greek rearguard was annihilated, with a probable loss of 2,000 men. This meant that the pass at Thermopylae was open for the Persian army, according to Herodotus, at the cost of 20,000 Persian men. After the battle, the Persians sacked and burnt their way through Greece, eventually destroying the city of Athens. Meanwhile, the Greeks were making preparations to defend themselves. They won a decisive naval victory over the Persian Armada in the Battle of Salamis in late 480 BC. Fearing that he would become trapped, Xerxes retreated back across the Hellespont, leaving his commander, Mardonius, to continue the Greek campaign. However, the following year saw a Greek army decisively defeat the Persians at the Battle of Plataea ending the second Persian invasion of Greece. In conclusion, the Battle of Thermopylae is one of the most remarkable last stands in history. Without it, the rest of Greece would likely not have had enough time to prepare and eventually defeat the Persians. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. Also, feel free to comment below any topics you would like me to cover in future videos. Thank you.